Hello everybody, this is Gabbis Games, and with this video I'm going to show you guys some of the bigger or biggest mistakes that newbie players can and actually will make when starting going with Crossout. So I purposely made a pretty horrendous build here to actually show those examples. So the first thing I always notice is what I call the Logman. So it's a Huntsman Cabin with a prolonged back, generally with canvas roofs as a roof offset here, but generally like little to no protection on the front. What this means is, um, <laughs> I'll have to take this out to actually show you guys a little bit. But the actual protection values on this thing are horrible because no matter what you do, you can directly shoot at the cabin. That's Wow, that turret gone. We're about halfway now. Uh, we need a few more machine gun shots, and there we go. So it's not very protected. I mean, if you try to shoot from the rear, it would probably be better. Even word from problem number two: fuel barrel spam. Fuel barrel spam is one of the worst things to do, if you guys can see here. I actually have filled up the entire rear with barrels. Until the brim. Until I ran out of barrels. I didn't run out of store. Uh, I literally ran out of fuel barrels. I didn't have any more. Because this is actually not my promotional gun. And uh, especially when mounting guns in fuel barrels or just exposing them just like this. is a really big mistake. Because... Uh, of course, they are not only they are volatile, so this thing only has 56 health, but if it gets destroyed, it will do 200 damage in a 3 meter radius. To show that, I will go with machine guns only, and I will be pinging that little fuel barrel where that's all this where this Hornet machine gun is mounted on. And it will, I think it will just explode entirely. Poof. So there are a few clicks. Add him more, a few more clicks, and he is entirely dead. So, fuel barrels, not a good idea. A giant rear, not a good idea. So, we'll be slightly improving that. So, we're going down to three barrels. Next for issue is got to be a rear mounted gun. And for, actually, for that, I will have to do a few things to just delay the build here. So, um, this issue is going to be facing having two different guns facing different directions. Especially ones that have limited angles. And this should probably be pretty obvious for a lot of players why you don't put guns in different directions like this. I Means like, oh, if I have someone behind me, I can shoot them while I can still drive away. And if I have guns on the side, I can drive around people to shoot them. So, for example, here, I can shoot without having to, like, keep my front that face at them. I could just drive around him. But generally, you really want to have the guns facing forward, because most enemies are going to be in front of you, and rear guns generally just really aren't effective. The next issue, another player, is gun mounting. So here we have an Avenger 50, uh, 57mm uh, cannon. Uh, it is 217 durability strong, so it has a health value of 270 points. And that means you have to do 217 damage to destroy this part. However, if we're looking at how this part is placed, currently it's placed on two parts only. This fender and this brazier. So if the Brazier is popped off, okay, right now it's, it's still fine. But if his Fender is popped off, uh, this is only 25 health. The gun will be disconnected from the cabin and it will fall off. So no matter how much armor this gun has, heck, even if you have a gun that has over 1000 health, if it is not protected properly on the gun mounting, it will fall off. Most guns have multiple connections. For example, this uh, cannon can be have like mountings on this side here. So we already have two connections. Still, if this part is shot off, it will fall off. Then if we throw on 
a part like this, then we can actually survive that thing being shot off. So we either have that thing or this thing can be shot off. And these can be shot off as well. Like, we have way more options before it get falls off. But still, backwards cannon. Don't do it. So, next up is overall just weak cannon shot a weapon mount again. Two, four health blocks. That's a no go. I really don't want to do it. Next up is uh, overweighting with frames. So here I see, uh, you, uh, you guys can see I have two 6x4 frames, uh, well 6x2 frames, and one 6x4 frame right here. And my mass, is, uh, they're all heavy frames, and you guys can see the mass here, 3394. But uh, if you want to be faster, so you can also see the tonnage and max speed here, you want to be as low health, uh, sorry, as low weight as possible. So instead of using this six wide frame right here, we uh, can have a multiple choice. We can use a four by four frame, we can use a two by four frame, or we can even use a two by four light frame. So from over 3200 kilograms, we just went down by 200 kilograms in the weight of the build. And it might not seem as much, but it is pretty important. And this actually gets more important for even another reason, which we'll show if I move this thing forward as possible just check it even if like these two weapons uh sorry uh, generate a fuel barrel they're kind of exposed what we can do is put them underneath the cabin they have connection points directly to the cabin right here as you guys can see and you can simply put a small block of armor so let's say this quarter wall to protect it on both sides it's a bit asymmetrical with the generator because it's tree wide. But it will keep it safe and keep it from getting destroyed. Because again, if this again gets destroyed, pretty much the entire vehicle goes poof. So I will just undo it, everything for a little while so I can actually get back to the original build to stress another issue. And I actually just noticed that I can't because it actually I uh, was in build mode. So this thing, uh, another issue here is power score inflation. So I'm using a Avenger and a Hornet and a Defender at a vehicle that was over three and a half thousand power score. And then I'm going to be matched against way stronger vehicles. And I actually have a vehicle right here. 4.2, uh, 2.1, 4.0, 2.7. So this thing here is the lower power score. And I would actually dare to say that this thing is stronger at 500 power score lower than this thing was. And it will easily be able to beat this thing. So that's a lot of people are a lot of frustrated. Like, oh, but even if the power score is balanced, like some parts are overpowered because, well, they beat me every single time. Well, that's also like your build because the power score only looks at the parts that you used. So if we can, we can like move parts without changing the power score at all. We can improve this vehicle by, for example, moving these parts to the side. Move these. Move them to the side. Have the machine gun placed at a different spot. Have the cannon come over here as well. And Already, even if with this, it's still not a great build, but it's already better than it was before. And we're gonna make it a little bit better, even. Well, it's not the greatest. Uh, we're gonna do this. Remove that and one back. At the uh, fenders. I mean, I'm gonna add a second fender because we can kind of use it. And in return, we will remove these comps. There's a four and four each, this is 22. And it, with that 18 block there, we should have more or less the same power score. Again, we're trying to change the underbell part. And you're already starting to see a bit more of a traditional build, if you could say so. Removing one of the barrels because that's our overall just a thing, barrel spam. Again, uh, I mentioned the explosiveness, but you also have to look at the power score, 120. It is a lot of power score for one part and that you really don't want to spend on it. Like if you can not spend it, that amount of energy, 
it becomes a uh, like uh, power push car. I mean, sorry guys. If you can not spend it, it will be better overall. And to finish this thing off, we can like put some small parts right here to give it a little bit of a protection, uh, so these things cannot be hit by straight bullets. Might even want to remove this part right here, and instead go with a double set like that. Uh, needing a eight white, and we only have two of those, so we actually have to go take two lights and put a heavy one in the front. And this build is already very different, but it carries almost the same power weapons. It has a similar health pool, and once I put this short on, uh, which is actually a better weapon than the. Um, a Hornet is, you actually have a better vehicle at a lower power score. It's still not a good vehicle, <laughs> but this will be closer to something that is actually usable. So you guys see me here put all the guns on the cabin. And if you can put the guns on the cabin, I strongly suggest doing so, because the cabin is the last part to go. Whatever you do, the cabin will stay on the vehicle until it dies. So I mentioned all the little weak parts. You really want to put the guns directly on the cabin if you can, just to prevent them from falling off. Another alternative will be the buggy parts. So for example, this um, buggy floor. I can mount the Avenger cannon on it, and even though this thing only has a 16 points health pool, it can be shot through. Which makes it way, last way longer than the amount of health that I showed you guys. So if I just move out a little bit here, like 18 health, it should be fall, drop off almost immediately with machine gun fire. And you only see me do very little damage, and actually it falls off, but the cannon, because of the side, uh, actually there's still connected here. There we go. I was going to say the sideways connection of the cannon saved it, but uh, it takes a while to shut off simply because the part is way more durable. And again with cannons, you can put them actually on the side of the cabin like this. And um, have them be protected that way. And they have a lot of room on top for this machine gun. Something like this would actually make it a... Or even a better loadout, but... Also you guys see here me protecting the guns, uh, the cabins a bit better. And now we're going to go into the next mistake, is not armoring the guns. So, um, for example, this, let's say this machine gun right here. You guys can see the firing angle of how, how far you can go. And this gun as well, and now yeah, I've placed this part here, it will be limited. But not if I actually just move the part away. And some parts can block guns up further as others. So this here blocks off this gun slightly but it doesn't block it off as much as you would have with this part. This one blocks it off even further. And with that, uh, knowing that, like, you can have some parts that can actually, like, have less of an impact on a uh, gun's firing angle if you do it right, and have them still being able to fire it down a little bit, while still protecting them, because even though they have a health of like, 153 here with the Defender, Adding a bumper catch still adds 54 health points on the bottom half of the gun, which um, like can mean the difference between having the gun being shot off or you shooting off the gun of your opponent. And a lot of people don't do that, really overexpose your guns. And um, again, power score inflation make, uh, makes the guns weaker than they should be. You will get the guns in an instant. And... Um, Another very big problem like I see people doing is being impatient with the market. This is gonna be is very less actual gameplay related but more economy related. So what I see a lot of people doing is when they go to the market, first up on my junk bow, I will um if I go to my storage, I'll be like, oh I need coins, I will right mouse button and sell it. And you guys can see here it will get thirty five point fifty six coins, so I can get over 40 coins if I would, uh, uh, like if I'm buying it, it will cost me over 40 coins. So not only I will get 5 coins less than if I decide to, oh I wa actually want it back, 
I would have to buy five extra coins. But not only that, uh, if I like would have to sell it for that um, 35, I would actually only receive 31.50. So if I want to buy rebuy the gun for 40 coins, I'll actually need eight and a half coin to rebuy it. Just because I decided to be impatient and quick buy and sell. Especially the storage buying and selling is really a bit weird because um, it is way slower in updating than the market live is. So right here, if you would refresh this page, like going like this, this would be actually be faster to refresh. So you guys can see, actually people are actually buying this for almost 40 coins. So the quick buy, here you guys can see how it popped up to almost 45 again. Is quite a bit slow and it tries to have you sell it for less than you can actually get if you quick sell it this way. So if you do it by hand right here, you can actually get 39.52. Still, I don't want to sell it because I want to keep it. But if you are too hasty with buying and selling, you can easily get yourself without like having yourself end up without coins and go well go bankrupt. And the entire thing in this game is if you grind and get more resources, so for example, uh, your extra scrap metal, your inventory value, so this value, will go up, or if you sell it, the uh, your balance goes up. And all you do is just m amassing a higher amount and higher amount and a higher amount of storage value and a higher and higher amount of balance. And that's everything that this game does is once you have more and more money. And if you buy and sell, you will lose that inventory value. So no matter what you do, you will come out worse than you actually were before that. Whenever you sell. So you really just buy and sell aware of that fact that you will lose that money and try to be careful. Because of course, like you cannot go entirely without ever selling anything because if you wanna, for example, uh, buy yourself access to the workbench, with the exception of these like limited uh, free accesses, you actually have to pay coins to access the workbenches, which makes you like at some point forced to actually sell an item and like especially with some of these more valuable items, you would have to sell a rare to actually get enough coins to get five more rares. So one of out of five you would have to sell just to keep yourself sustained. Instead, I generally just sell my basic resources and go and buy the single part I need at the time and try to keep that part for as long as possible without selling them. So again, this is not a very uh, high value account. It grinded a little bit, but it has a few items that I can use. And you really would just want to try the basic shotguns, try the basic cannons, try the basic machine guns, and to decide whether you like the long range, short range, or mid range roll better. And then also try them whether you like the fast firing machine guns, the very slow firing cannons, or the average fast uh, shotguns, because you can basically mix and match the medium speed, mid to long range weapons, so like the speed of the shotguns, but you have the range of cannon or machine gun, then you're looking at auto cannons. If you want the uh, fire rate of a cannon, but you, you you prefer the shotguns, then of course you've got these junk bows because those are the cannon based shotguns. And you're gonna make a mix and match your playstyle like that, but you really have to decide what kind of weapon you want to have before you actually start buying them. Another impact might be the untradeable parts. So this one is not for sale, as you guys can see. I got it from a crate. Those might impact what you want to do. But be careful, like if it doesn't fit your playstyle, just put it away in your storage and simply don't use it. I mean, you can throw it away and uh, it will give you nothing. So you might as well keep it in your storage. It does, however, keep up storage space. So do watch out for that. But that's it. Those are the biggest well, mistakes I see a lot of players do with a game like this. Another big mistake would, of course, be the high tier weapons, low tier weapons that you have to watch out for. Do so, please balance your power score properly before saying, oh no, I'm fighting way too strong of an enemy. Try to look at your own build first. Decide whether it's good or bad. If you're not sure, go and ask someone 
that might know better, that have more experience, so for the higher tier players, generally do so. And they generally have more experience. If they're gonna go, like, be like, oh, you're a noob, then just ask someone else, because there are plenty of nice people here in the uh, post-apocalypse, as uh, <laughs> all the, everyone says. And, but yeah, we're still here to have fun, even in this apocalypse pr franchise. It's still here for fun, and without these tips, I saw a lot of people just quit because they didn't know what to do and did bad stuff that just ruined their experience. That said, I will hope you guys have a pr uh, very fun, uh, like, a new year, and uh, parties, whatever. <laughs> and, um... Uh, I'll see you guys all in the next year. See ya.